Good morning. Sorry, my computer was doing something. So I'm five minutes late. I apologize. Um, today I'm going to play around with purple again. I'm going to be going from a uh, dark purple and just fade it down and maybe more of a cream down here, maybe a little bit of a white. And then we're going to we're going to pull it all down so that we end up with a nice stream. So this is a three by four foot canvas. So 48 by 36. And without any further ado, let's get started. I've already treated the canvas. So it's got one coat of uh, white paint on it. And I am going to grab my purples. My sticks, purple, purple, and not much purple, maybe a, no. maybe a bit of red. Nice full purple. And uh, fading down the gray and with a lighter color. So the vast majority of it is going to be this. So let's go ahead and start laying down our foundation. doing fine this morning. I was in a weird mood this morning. I don't know why. I'm back on a, you know, back in, I used to weigh 450 pounds. So that was, I look at the pictures, particularly when I was in Europe that way. I don't even know how I fit in those airplane seats. But I was uh, took a picture with one of my sons outside of the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, and boy, was I fat. I didn't even realize how fat I was. Made me sad to look at. I was unhealthy. So I lost a bunch of weight. Lost a, I got a lap band in 2011 and word up, you can screw up a lap band too. Doesn't take much at all. So, I did the lap band, and uh, at first I lost some weight, and that was cool, and then I uh, stopped losing weight, really. And then I gained all the weight back, lap band or not. What I'm saying is you can mess up a lap band, which is uh, bariatric surgery. Uh, they put a, they put like a, a spinster, they put a, a closing valve about here, uh, just above your stomach. The idea is to slowly titrate things into your stomach. It's not a bypass, um, but what they do do is they put a little port with a hose, I guess, 
And in this port, they can add saline solution or subtract saline solution to close down the aperture. And uh, when it's really too closed, it's hard to drink, it's hard to eat, it's hard to get your vitamins and bipolar pills down. So I don't have it that tight, but if I eat too fast or I drink while I'm eating, um, right now, it wasn't that way before, I had it too far open, but right now it, it reminds me. It's more of a reminder to eat healthy. But like I said, I, I gained, after I had the lap band, I gained about, I don't know, 150 pounds so that uh, what I really ended up with is about, I ended up being 450 pounds with the lap band in 2013. I was pretty sick. I was very sick. I spent a lot of time in the hospital, and when I did, I had lost a bunch of weight. So, I, uh, I had lost like 20 pounds in January of 2013. It was right after my uh, stepdad, Dennis, had died of brain cancer, and I had spent I had spent a lot of time with him in the hospital, and I guess it just got to me, and uh, I gained a ton of weight. Then I was in the hospital because I got sick. Probably something I caught in the hospital. Um, because I was there every day for, I don't know, six hour stretches. Um, then the family would take over for me. And uh, I probably caught some while I was in there. So, gained all that weight, lost all that weight. And uh, so then I just decided right there that I was going to work off of that and keep losing weight. And that is what I did. So that year, I lost 170 pounds. I had gotten myself down to like 300 or something and then uh, lost a little bit more weight because in 2015, we did a lot of trips to Europe. Like we did so many trips to Europe that we stopped telling the boys that we're headed to Europe. We just asked them to watch the dogs and they didn't really know if we were going to Europe or if we were going to, if we were going to New York. Did a lot of travel that year. And uh, so I had gotten down to about 290. And what happened was, I started getting a lot of these, uh, well, the, the skin doesn't shrink up really well. So you, it ends up just sliding off your body here and here. And uh, then over the years, I started gaining weight back. And uh, so I recently, this year, decided that I was going to lose a minimum of 50 pounds. I really want to lose 100 pounds, but we'll see. Supposed to have, have uh, been working with my insurance 
to have surgery to get this part off and this part off, this to get the skin off. But before I have that surgery, I'm going to work really, really hard to, um, to lose more and more weight so that we can get that to be as beneficial as possible. And so today I got up pissed off because I'm, I'm doing a mock keto. It's not really keto um, because I'm not, I'm low carb, not no carb. I guess that's a good thing. And uh, so yesterday, went to go see 1917. It's a great movie, awesome movie. I uh, am political science. Uh, my master's is in international security. So not too many people know about World War One. It's trench warfare, you know, Das Boot. Um, is probably the best film I know, um, and it it most accurately describes what it was like to be in the trenches, which is what they say. You know, being in the trenches. Well, that's front line. It's a term that we use for kind of euphemism, I guess. And um, so I was really excited to see that. But when we went there, I didn't want popcorn. Not a big popcorn fan. Got the butter and the salt. So what did I do instead? I got pretzel bites. And they there was more in the order, and I shouldn't have eaten it. But I like to munch on things because I am a very active person and I have a tendency to fall asleep during movies, even exciting movies, and especially long movies, and this one was long. So um, this morning when I scaled in, I, I'm retaining water two pounds heavier than the day before. And yeah, I get on the scale all the time when I'm losing weight because that's what I did before and it worked. So that's what I do now. And um, it pissed me off and I was upset. So this morning I'm kind of pissy. Plus it's kind of time for me to be a little bipolar off, I guess. So, uh, here's pissing me. But, you know, I, I painted a little bit this week. I wanted to paint more. I just didn't have the time. And, you know, I do something every day for the art career. And sometimes it's working on social media. Sometimes it's trying to book uh, exhibitions. You know, I, don't, I think people think being an artist just means that you paint. And while this is by far the funnest thing I do, it's not necessarily the most important thing that I do because uh, if you don't market yourself, if you don't pay attention to the business side, you will not be able to afford to keep painting. And it's not that I want to get super rich, although that would be nice. It's more that I want to be able to afford to do all the painting and traveling and whatnot with my with my art 
And the thing is, is that I work with my dad's stuff. And his stuff is like ridiculously expensive, which is good for me because it allows me to be an artist. My dad's, my late father's work, which I manage, allow me the luxury of doing what I'd rather do and but at the same time, uh, things have really slowed down on that part. And so I need to pick up the steam on this part of my life and try to get my career jump started a little bit so that I can make up for that loss of revenue income. And it's just because people just don't have at their disposal 16 millimeter film projectors anymore. And it costs a fortune to get this paint, this uh, film developed. So he was a filmmaker and So, as goes film and development, goes that income. And so I end up spending a lot of time on both the Paul Sherritt's estate and business end of this, trying to book up appointments for live paints. I think probably what I'll end up doing is doing a lot of live paints from Breckenridge because I have other business up there. And so, I'm booking up these Saturdays, and a lot of them will end up being up in Breckenridge. I'm in Denver. So, it'll be interesting. And so I've been trying to book up live paint weeks. And that takes a lot of phone calling. And maneuvering to make sure I have the time that I want, which is 10 a.m., make sure that I can get into the buildings on time, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm going to try not to use too many contrasting yellow uh, colors. I really haven't liked the pink as much although I am going to go pink down in here, but I'm not going to go a lot of fluorescent. So when I drag, I'm coming down here. So a lot of uh, this paint's going to end up in the white that I put down here. So I don't need to put too much more there. I do need to set up with some black up on the top. We'll go with, I have a different, couple different blacks, but we'll go with this straight on black. Anyway, back to the weight thing. Um, I've done really good. I'm on track to have lost 10 pounds this this month uh, easily. I'll, I'll easily hit 20, 10 pounds this month. And it's the goal is 10 pounds per month, but sure would be nice if I could hit 215 or 15 per month which is what I was on goal to until I overdid on carbs yesterday. So today is kind of a, a one day keto. I'm gonna minimize my carbs and still eat healthy fats. Like this morning I had eggs and cheese and some ham in it.
and uh, so hopefully today I can erase the sins of yesterday. Shit, this is all coming down the side. That's a waste of paint. But I plan on getting down to this year, plan on getting down to 245. But if I get this surgery, which is under the approval process right now with my, with my insurance, um, then I think they're calling it bariatric something or another because I've lost so much weight. And still, even today, I'm still 130 pounds lighter than I was when I started in 2013. So that's enough to qualify. for this surgery. And if I if I get that surgery, I'm going to go more for 230 this year, which is a, a completely obtainable goal for me. Um, because I've done it before, and I know I can do it again. And so, uh, I am in the gym all the time. Went and looked at a new gym yesterday, and it looks pretty fantastic, and it's a fraction of the cost of my current gym. I've been with my current gym for a long time, but you now you got to do what you got to do. And, uh, Heidi ho, Heidi ho. I'm, I'm a big guy anyway, I mean muscularly. And when I work out, I tend to bulk up. It's not on purpose. It's not like I take any bulking up vitamins. It's just the way my body works, so I become stupidly large, muscular. Okay, um, instead of going with a white at the bottom, we'll highlight with the white, but I'm going to see if I have enough of the, this paint here. Are we live okay? Um, yeah, okay, we're 20, 24 minutes in. had this in my head all week, so I know what I'm doing here. That's good. I guess it's a, you know, 
still a reflection of how I feel today. A little bit defeated maybe. But not discouraged. I mean, today I ate bra leg, uh, breakfast with uh, a uh, scrambled egg with ham and cheese. Then for lunch, I've already pre packed. Uh, already pre-packed some uh, cold cuts, salami, hard salami, and cheese, a couple of, a little bit of cranberries, which is not exactly keto, I don't think, I don't know, don't care. And um, I'll have that for lunch. And uh, that should be enough. That should be enough to bring back some balance. Get me back on track. And I ate a lot of salt yesterday. For dinner, I made salmon patties. They were pretty much keto, but not really. I still use breadcrumbs. I like Italian breadcrumbs, so that's like totally not keto. But keto is, if you don't know, is a very low carb uh, and low sugar diet that I, I thought at first it was like more of a fad, but then I started doing some research and there's some very valid, uh, valid information out there on why a low carb diet is good and why a high carb diet is trash for your body. And that is, I think why Americans are so fat and sick is because restaurants give you obscene portions. Restaurants, restaurant plates are just ridiculous. Um, so even without the fact, the effects of the lap band or anything, um, The restaurant food is just bad, just bad. And the, the uh, servings are probably what you'd get. In a third world country, one of our plates is probably what a, a family would eat. And so, uh, <laughs> except for if you pay more. The more expensive your meal, the more, the smaller the portion gets. But if you go to an expensive place, like a steakhouse is really popular here in the West, um, then you will find that, uh, you will find that the, there's less carbs, unless you're eating their pre-dinner uh, bread, which is one of their, what a trick because it's filling, but it leaves you hungry, really. Which is um, a trick because um, when your dinner plate comes, you'll be just temporarily filled a little bit.
which is intentional. We'll try to get a little bit of a pre-blend on this. No reason to overwork the paint later. I'm gonna go up with this a little deeper. Use this as a contrasting color without it being real contrast. So, the idea. is that I'm eating very high fat, but not like sweet fats, like, you know, sugar has a lot of calories, it's not really fattening by itself, but it'll make your body fat. Okay, so it's fat. Okay, so now we're gonna self-contrast. Same thing as we did there. Kind of mix up this barrier a little bit without having to work the paint too much later. For dinner, thinking of making a beef stew um, without potatoes. So I use some of uh, those little onions, some white onions. And I'll use some beef broth, that's all cool. want this end to come down a little bit so that it's not uh, it's not balanced. I don't want balance. I'm not going for balance here. One of the things about balance is that uh, one, I don't find it as appealing to the eye, but then also if you're going to go balanced, well then you better go all the way balanced. Because then you're looking at Then you have to be actually legit geometric. Where's my star for this? Oh, there it is.
Sounds like I may get some guests here. already see what I'll finish up with. I'm going to try not to use too many colors today. But I did have this thing where I thought I'd be neat to have some gold here and there. This is a nice color. I'm going to use it for highlight down here. Mix it up a little bit.
Okay, just one more thing I wanted to do to it before we begin with the drag. Drop in some real white. Okay. That's it. That is it. Now there's time to get your real work. And so, I guess we'll start here. Bring this black down. Uh, again, I don't want to overwork the paint.
Yeah, that is a great painting you did here today. Because this is how I feel.
Hi.
Gone.
I've already used the name Purple Kush. I've used Kush D. I don't know. I don't know if I've used Kush. But this is Kush. Okay, so. up a little bit. There we go. And now, here's what we have been working on this morning. So, thank you for joining me. I'm going to sign out before, well, let me uh, let's take you on a little tour of the painting, kind of see. Some of the details there. So, signing off for January 18th. Thank you for joining me. Join me again every Saturday morning, 10 a.m., uh, regardless of what location I'm at. So, thank you again. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks.